Their experiments enabled pharmacists to invent products like soap powder, table salt and matches. Thomas drafted in Phil Dunford, a member of the UK Pyrotechnic Society, to show him how to make his own matches for the pharmacy. I don't suppose you could recommend a few techniques that we could use. Well, the matches that were used earlier, maybe from 1800, were called Promethean matches. The way they, they work is by mixing potassium chlorate and sugar. And when those two... The method of lighting the match was to dip it into sulfuric acid. So if you just dip it quickly in, okay. just so you cover the tip, that's it. Oh, and leave it that's out it. there, yeah? yeah? That's it. And you should see it will start to fizz. Oh yeah, look, there we go. Oh wow. <laughs> so not, uh, rather more messy and um, harder to light than our modern matches. Other advances in matchmaking had disastrous side effects. The precursor of today's red phosphorus matches were made of white phosphorus, which poisoned match workers and caused a disease known as fossy jaw. The phosphorus was like a waxy substance which has to be melted and it gave off a vapour, which at first gave you headaches and uh, sallow skin, and then mm. gave you toothache, and then you lost your teeth, and then your jaw and your bones started to sort of go spongy. And um, for a long time, people worked under these conditions until they finally banded together and refused to do it anymore and went on strike in the famous Match Girls strike. Oh, um, I see. So at the same time as these people are agitating for better working conditions in the factories, there's the same thing going on in the pharmacy. Really? You know, yeah. you've got this uh, movement to regulate poisons and explosives and so on and make things safe. Yes. Tom's made about 20 matches, enough for a box full. The downside to carrying these matches around was that in order to light them, you needed sulfuric acid. As Phil demonstrates, an accidental spillage of acid would have had nasty results. So that's the mixture that's in the Promethean match heads. Right. This is some sulfuric acid, and this is what happens when they get together. Oh, wow. <laughs> so you really don't want that happening in your pocket, do you? No, not at all. So I think your choice of the other... Tom will need to explore safer, more reliable alternatives to these early matches. The dangers of the explosive Promethean matches had been clear for all to see. One pharmacist, John Walker, used his knowledge of science to create a safer, more marketable alternative, the friction match. OK, do you want me to have a go? Straight the tip along. So just straight, straight like that, yeah? Just yeah. like a normal match? Yeah. Walker was making percussion caps for guns when he discovered that antimony sulphide and potassium chlorate caught fire when they were rubbed together. Antimony trichloride. We need to add a Use couple of drops of water, and this will make up to a blacky brown sort of mixture, which is a bit more of the colour we're familiar with matches. It's quite surprising to me that pharmacists were making matches, and not only that, but coming up with new processes for making them. Well, I suppose the pharmacists um, had the materials on hand, and they were educated men, and very many of them, particularly um, this John Walker, who invented this friction match, was very much uh, a polymath. The locals called him Stockton's Encyclopedia. You can really imagine someone sort of uh, working in their back workshop, sort of trying to come up with the latest uh, or a new, a new technique that's going to really propel their business. So these are definitely safer than the first ones we made, aren't they? Absolutely. But they're, I mean, they're not safety matches. No, so the definition of safety matches really is where there's two separate parts, each of which on their own can't do any harm at all. So in a modern safety match that you strike on a box, right. um, the head in itself can't actually catch fire on its own. When you scrape it down, what in fact you're doing is the side of the box is covered with red phosphorus. So when you scrape, you take a little tiny bit of the red phosphorus off of the match mm -hmm. and create a more dangerous mixture on the end of the match, but only in a tiny amount. Mm, okay. But the match itself can never catch fire unless it's touching the red phosphorus. And that's what makes it truly a safety match as opposed to just a friction match. So, if we're ready then... We yes, that looks about right. Just um, dip the tips in, make sure it's only the very tip, otherwise obviously it can burn further down, which could be dangerous. That looks good. 
And that you can see looks rather more like you would think a modern match looks, wouldn't it, with the dark colour. John Walker, already comfortably well off, passed up the option of making himself a fortune. Instead of patenting his match, he made it freely available for anyone to make. Walker produced the matches for just three years, and the credit for his invention was attributed only after his death in 1859.